Hi, I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. I wanted to take a second to ask you a favor. If you're enjoying this episode, please remember to subscribe to it on whatever podcast app you're using, or leave a review if you can. Any little bit helps. Also, if you'd like, you could go to my website at tomraiswebsite.com and sign up for the email list, and you'll get information about each artist that I talk to, and you'll get alerts as to when different episodes are coming out. Plus, you'll also get a call out when I'm looking for artists to schedule interviews on the show. So go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and subscribe to the show there. And also, thank you so much for listening. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk with an artist who basically tells me that they started posting things to Instagram. Their whole concept was they posted about a certain thing and they would tag different companies about this certain thing, the connection being breweries, and uh, eventually got a job doing labels and then got more jobs doing labels and then got more jobs doing other things. And they literally were not planning on doing this. And I explained to them, you did a marketing strategy and they just were doing a thing. And it's a fun conversation. We uh, learn about the things that they had to figure out along the way as far as working with getting stuff printed for companies and on products and things like that. So it's fun conversation. And here it is starting right now. My name's Pat Enzi. Uh, I don't totally know what I do, but I do a lot of drawing and a lot of illustration, a lot of painting and a lot of just building things. So yeah. Thanks. Okay. And first <laughs> of all, where are you based out of? So Philadelphia suburbs, it's a uh, brew mall PA. Um, I drove down to the Phillies last night oh. to take, <laughs> and then came back and still watched the game at home. So, so very cool. <laughs> Nice. And one thing I want to say, so uh, when I was doing research on you and also, so I have been following you for a while and I assumed your handle was Frenzy. Do you get that a lot? Because then I looked it up and it's like, oh, it's Pat Henzy. <laughs> which yeah, is brilliant. a lot of times I, uh, I've kind of just rolled with it. Yeah. I, uh, I used to just have like my pages, Patrick Henzy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then I just kind of shortened it to P. Henzi. Mm -hmm. And then when Instagram became a thing, I originally had it as like, in my mind, P. Henzi art, something like that. And, and I had art at the end of it. Okay. And then I just kind of thought like these handles are just kind of handles. Everyone's just got like a, a name or a handle. And I was like, oh, I'll just make it P. Henzi, Fenzi. Yeah. Um, but I actually never heard that in, in my own head until multiple pe people like, like yourself just kind of said, Oh, Fenzy, Fenzy. So it kind of mm -hmm. just became that. Yeah. So I guess that's my art illustration name or whatever. So. Yeah. And me just, it's one of those things where you're like, when you're reading it's, there's a name for it, but you know, your mind just completes the word for you. You're not like sitting there making sure that you look at every letter. And for some reason I was adding an R in there, like frenzy. I was just assuming it was frenzy with a pH. So it's, it's just one of those weird things that now, now I see it and it's almost like I pay too much attention to it. Anyway, that's, I just wanted to point that out. If we're, I've been thinking you had the wrong name or a different name all this uh -oh. time until I met you. Now, uh, so you were talking about, you know, you illustrate and you paint. First of all, how did you get started as an artist? Like, what were some of the things that you first started doing when you began? It's a tough one. I mean, so when I was in high school, I don't want to say I didn't like art class, but I just didn't participate in a lot of things in school, unfortunately. I wish I could go back and participate in a lot more things. But, uh, but I did have a room in the basement of my parents' house. Um, and me and my dad, um, put up drywall all around, uh, nice. in the basement. And then probably within moments of that, I just kind of started painting whatever I wanted on the walls and I'd have friends come over and kind of do the same thing. And just like people put up tags or their name or just draw a little doodle or something. So like my entire bedroom was just kind of like covered, um, mm -hmm. And I liked it that way. And I guess like, I kind of 
Yeah, you haven't strayed thing. very far uh, from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I kind of was always inspired by like '80s, '90s films, like the the bad guys hang out or the good guys hang out, and like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like their their hideout. Um, <laughs> and like I remember watching like RoboCop. There was like I think RoboCop Two. They went to like the the hangout for like the bad guys, and there was a bunch of arcade machines and like a ramp and, mm-hmm. and just art all over the walls and graffiti and stuff. And I guess it, it's kind of chaotic, but at the same time, like I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so you started out, uh, basically how did you end up in the basement? First of all, uh, cause that's, I think that's every kid's oh, dream. Well, that was just something I wanted. And, uh, as my parents had more kids, I ended up having three sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of like, all right, what's going to work here. And my dad did, enough contracting and painting his whole life and stuff like that, that, you know, pestering them day after day, eventually they just kind of gave in and said, all right, well, stud it out, put drywall up, do the electrical, like it's your room now, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was, I was very lucky in that regard. Like I I had a, a spot that I could, pretty much do whatever I wanted within reason. And, and it was okay. So. Yeah. Well, and it's one thing now to vandalize the walls. That's fine. I mean, you can sit there and just make a mess on the walls and just put sayings up. And like you said, tags and things like that. But at that point, had you actually been doing any drawing or like taken art classes or w- was, were you actually creating illustrations at that point? Yeah. But I didn't really think anything of it. I okay. mean, just like any kid, like, I was always drawing and, uh, from a very, very young age. And I guess I just never really stopped that, but I didn't really ever see like a career in it or, you know, again, in high school, there was like art classes and stuff and I took them and they were really fun, but I didn't really like see that going anywhere, Okay. Um, which was probably not great for me. Like I, I wish that I was able to see that a little better when I was younger, but I I just didn't. So I just kind of kept making things, but I was really just making things for myself or just like friends and like just trying to, you know, make my room look cool or, you Mm -hmm. know, draw on a skateboard and make it look cool um, before I'd go out and ride it or something or just, you know, doodling on anything like notebooks. Like in school, it was like constantly drawing on my shoes, my notebooks, like getting in trouble for not paying attention and just doodling stuff. But Mm -hmm. You know, typical kid stuff, I guess. <laughs> so were you influenced by skateboard art back then? Which, I mean, I'm pretty sure all of us were, but... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I feel like as I got older, I realized that my influences were just from everything all the time. But uh, but yeah, definitely mm-hmm. like skateboard art, punk rock, um, just any of those kind of things. Like punk rock and skateboarding was definitely a big thing, but even just like every kind of thing that was going on, like rap and just everything that I was seeing just kind of got in there and popped out, mm-hmm. you know? So. Yeah, there was, I, I ran across a really early issue of Thrasher. I think it was on like archive.org. It was posted somewhere where you could actually leaf through the entire magazine online. And I remember looking at that and seriously, all the ads, I'm just looking at it going, I, that's basically what I was trying to draw. Like looking at it was a weird kind of thing where I I was just like, this was my inspiration. I didn't even realize that I was just copying some ad that I saw in a skateboard magazine when I was in high school. And that was the drawing style that I originally adapted. I don't really do that anymore, but looking back on it, I'm like, why don't I draw like that anymore? You know? (laughs) um... How would you explain the work that you do? Like say now you're, you, you've started drawing stuff and you say in high school, you really didn't think you could do anything with the art or that there was a career in it, but, uh, n- going forward and the art that you post now, how would you explain the work that you do? I mean, it's always different. Um, okay. I, I still, I still really like just kind of messing around with things. Uh, I jump around from like doing wood cuts and then like linoleum carvings to, you know, I, I use Procreate on the iPad a lot for stuff now. Um, a lot of skateboard uh, illustrations that I do. 
are just all done on the iPad and then I send them off uh, and then they get them printed. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's always just been like an evolution of like <laughs> what I was struggling with and what I was actually creating because again, going back like high school, didn't really think anything was going to happen. Worked a few jobs, always like doodled, always drew things, always was like making things and you know friends and family were like oh that's really cool i like that and i was like yeah it's mm -hmm. but it's not really making me any money or anything um not that that's what it's about but like you know you, you gotta make money oh it's a little uh, a little bit about uh, it. <laughs> it it wasn't until uh <clears throat> i was working in a bottle shop just like selling beers <clears throat> and i was kind of walking the aisles and stuff just looking at stuff walking the shelves and I thought to myself, well, I can do this and I want to do this, but where do I go from there? And that was right around the time that Instagram, at least as far as I remember, it was becoming popular. Mm -hmm. And I was making a lot of art and I was doing a lot of acrylic painting, but also digital. Um, I was working in Photoshop, um, but I, everything was self-taught. So I didn't really totally know what I was doing, but I was just posting everything I was making all the time. And it was only like a month or so after I was thinking to myself, oh, I'd really like to be doing this same kind of thing. Then a brewery reached out to me and asked me to start doing some labels with them. So this was literally like, just from posting things that they reached out to you. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I, this is, this is going back years and years ago, but yeah. uh, I started every brewery that I would go to or like bottle shop or something and get some beer I would usually pour the beer out, take a photo, kind of do like a cartoon kind of thing with the photo. Um, I don't know what that's called, but like very like Roger Rabbit looking stuff, like not cartoon, more illustration because it's not, not moving. But uh, so I would draw like hops jumping into a, you know, a, a glass of beer or something. So you'd and mix like the real life photo with illustration on top of it. Yeah, and that okay. was just for fun. I was having a lot of fun with that. Um, I noticed a lot of people were posting like what beers they were drinking, and it was just like a shot of like, there's the beer. And I wanted to do more with it. So every time I did that, I just kind of did a little drawing with it, a little illustration. And I was tagging all the breweries, but again, it was just for fun. <laughs> I didn't really think anything would come of it. But, but yeah, someone reached out, and we kind of had like a little meeting. It was very like informal. And I explained all the things I knew how to do because everything I was very self-taught. Yeah. Um, so it, it was a, it was a big learning experience for me, but I've learned so much over the years from that because not everybody's always on the same page. So how so I let them know exactly what I knew how to do. And like immediately after submitting things, it's like, Oh, well we need, this to be a vector or we need it to be this or we need it to be that. <clears throat> and I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but stayed up late a lot of nights and learned how to do all that. So mm -hmm. like then I figured out illustrator started doing a lot of work in vector. <clears throat> um, and then it seems like now there's been kind of like now anything's printable. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, I learned all that stuff and it's great. And like, I'm really happy that I did, but now you can just print anything. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, I feel like it used to be really tough. You go to a printer and it would be like, it has to be exactly like this and absolutely not the case anymore. <laughs> right. Or even the way that it used to be like a bundled EPS file had to be used yeah. and you had to have the fonts with it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. there, there used to be so many more requirements. And then, uh, yeah, the, the whole vector thing, I remember learning about vector and it just, it takes a while. And when it flips, it's like, oh, it's not as difficult as I was making it out to be. You're trying to understand what the hell the difference is. You're like, I'm still yeah. drawing a picture. And of but course, also, at least for me, it ends up being a very, not a very different kind of looking thing, but like a different take on a style. Oh, yeah. Like, like when I started doing a lot of that, it was like, oh, this looks different than like what I was doing before because you can't do all the same kind of things. Um, and, and it is when you're, when, when you're talking to somebody that doesn't know how any of that works, but then they have to go to a printer and they want something specific. 
it just doesn't always all jive. But like, I made sure that it did. Like at the end of the day, like we always got everything to print and, you know, projects were always completed, but there was a little struggle for a while where mm-hmm. I was like, I guess I got to learn some of these things. So, but yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for it though. Well, in learning in the process is definitely, for me, a different way of going about it that is more of how I learn things. Like I could study up on something and learn and then go, okay, you do this, this, and this, and you follow the steps. And it's like, but I haven't applied it to anything. I'm just following the steps. But when you're like, they're saying, no, it needs to be this way. And you're like, I don't understand why it's supposed to be this way. And then you got to figure it out and learn as you go along. Like to me, that is way more of a learning process uh, example than reading about it for sure. You yeah, know? No, that's true. And, and then on top of it, there's the whole like, uh, I, when I first started learning about vectors and, you know, uh, illustrator and all that kind of stuff that's when png started coming out too and it's like now what the hell's this all about like it's still yeah. just a raster image but for some reason it's better i don't yeah. know <laughs> that was when print on demand like cafe press and all that was around and they were trying to say you need to use png images i don't know did, okay. you, ever, did you ever use cafe press do you remember that it was just the heat transfer site stuff. yeah it's uh I don't know. It's it, that stuff's still out there. I think Cafe Press is still. Out there. Yeah, I know. But, I don't know if they've upped their game and gone to to direct to garment or not. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That was that was so funny. It was just like basically a photo transfer on a heat transfer screen print or or I mean yeah. like laser print. Those are great. I almost <laughs> missed those. Um, okay, so so when you were when you're starting these, you said uh, you were using Photoshop and Illustrator, but you said now you're using Procreate. So what is your process when you're starting a project? Now that you've done more of them and you've learned what you've learned, like what kind of advice do you have for starting a project when you do things like this? Oh, I don't know. No. I, oh. <laughs> well, I don't know because going back to like what I was saying before, like I, I'll, I'll I'll try a lot of different things out, like. I recently did a, uh, a a beer label that was very cartoony illustration, kind of like SpongeBobby looking un- underwater. Nice. And I was like, oh, let's take this a little further and make it like uh, even more SpongeBob like. And I <laughs> I took like my own for my own arms and like made muscles, took photos of them, took all the tattoos out. And then like made that part of the illustration, which they actually ended up picking something else, but uh, <laughs> that, that I had drawn. But I guess I'm still going back and forth, even even when I'm working on a project, just kind of like messing around with it and having fun with it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do now always start with a sketch, and sometimes they're like really, really loose and rough. Do you do and the sketch on paper, or are you doing it in Procreate? Yeah, I'll do it on paper first. And it's kind of funny because a lot of the people I work with now, um, they know that it's like super, super loose and I'll have notes all over it. And it'll be like maybe like pencil and maybe blue, blue pencil and red Mm -hmm. pencil and like just ideas that I have. Um, And if you looked at it, you'd be like, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. But everybody I've worked with now enough times, they like kind of can see it as well, just like me. And then I'll, usually like scan it in either on the scanner that I have or take a photo of it and then start sketching it out better. Usually now in procreate on my iPad. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like like very loose at first. And I feel like I get much better illustrations when I'm like starting really, really loose because I start to kind of see things that weren't intentional. And I'm like, Oh, that really works like that kind of like the way that curve works or something. Like I, I love doing that. Um, but yeah, that, I guess that just goes back to just <laughs> with all my art, like <clears throat> just if I'm getting really bored of like doing like beer label after beer label after beer label, I'll just think to myself like, oh, I got to go like cut out some wood and like paint something and like ca- carve that out and then like hang that on the wall. And like when I'm done that project, I'm like, okay, now I can come back to something like totally different. Mm-hmm. Going back to like beer labels, I guess. I guess I kind of have to bounce back and forth between like this very like, here's what the client is asking me to do, illustration, get paid, do something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then like like, bounce back and forth 
um, a lot like that. So I don't know if I really answered the question, but <laughs> that's you where did, because I was actually <laughs> going to ask too, as if you, when you were drawing it on paper, if you scanned it or took a photo, and you said you do both, which is. You know, I've done that way too. I mean, I still get a flatbed scanner, but for some reason, I'll just always take a picture of it on my phone because I can just transfer it over easier and all that kind of stuff. And I also do, uh, I have the same thing with storyboards. I'll sketch it out when I'm doing storyboard for like an animation or something. And to me, it makes perfect sense. And I'll share it with people and they'll be like, I don't know what I'm looking at here. And I'm like, no. And, and you know, I'm looking at it going, and I got the the arch of his arm just right. And I'm going to totally just copy that instead of redrawing it. And to me, it looks like I, it's so loose and like free and I can totally work with this. And everybody else is like, I don't, it just looks like you squealed a bunch of blue stuff. And yeah, yeah. for some reason, you think it's a person moving from one place to the other. Yeah. So I, I, I'm with you on the sketching thing. It, I, it's absolutely clear to me when I'm doing it. So, yep. uh, and you started out just drawing the beer labels for fun and doing it and said you weren't planning on this outcome, but uh, truthfully, it's a brilliant marketing strategy. You stuck with the that thing, continued to do it, tagging people, uh, tagging yeah. the companies like it's essentially you you're saying you weren't trying to, but that's literally a marketing strategy. So <laughs> how long yeah. did it take before one of them reached out to you? Well, I guess it was probably, I think I said like two or three months. Like it was, it was pretty quick. Um, I mean, yeah. I was doing a ton of other art and I might've had some followers and stuff, but like as I started tagging breweries and just kind of doodling alongside like their products, um, it just kind of, I guess I got in front of the right people and yeah. then, you know, not to, not to talk myself up, but like, I try to be really nice to people. Like that, <laughs> that's the thing I do. That's the, that's and, just being a human being. That's not talking well, yourself well, not up. Everybody. Yeah. But, uh, through all that, I just kind of like met more people and working in beer, uh, like selling beer and stuff. I kind of mm -hmm. like a brewery owner, or like somebody, related to that would like come in, buy some stuff and be like, Oh, do you carry this? Do you carry that? And we get talking and they'd be like, Oh, you do illustration or you, you do this or do that. Oh, you did a beer label. Like, um, so one, one brewery I met, uh, the owner, he would come into the bottle shop I was working at and just kind of like drop off samples and stuff. But he was like really small at the time. And it just kind of was this thing. He's like, Oh, you've done, you've done some labels for like, this brewery, like, do you want to do something for me? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Hmm. He wasn't really like anything at the time. And then I got to do, I got to do a ton with him. Um, he's okay. an awesome guy. They've, uh, he, I, forget, I think they're, I don't know what state they're in now though, but like, I, I don't really work with them anymore. Okay. Um, but that's, to be honest, they went with an artist that's nearby that is just phenomenal. And I can't even complain, but like at first they were doing bouncing back and forth a lot. Um, with me and maybe like another guy and then the guy that they went with as like the full-time artist and uh, they're, I guess like the company that bought into his brewery kind of like put things in front of him where it was like, instead of using like three guys and sometimes these other people as guests, like how about you just stick with one thing? Like that's the way they went. But again, I can't complain at all. Like, that guy's awesome. That artist is awesome. Like, yeah, it, it was an awesome experience. And like, you know, I, I, I welcome all that stuff because it's just always like I get to do more and more when those kind of things happen. So, right. And that's another thing I wanted to know about, too. So it's one thing to have somebody go, oh, that's cool. You did this. Would you do a label for us? But you're continuing to do such a thing. So how are you? Are you reaching out to people? Is it really just you got one and then they just keep passing it along? Like, how are you meeting these people to yeah, do more so, labels? Yeah, so the, that, that guy, um, he was working at a brewery that was actually letting him brew his beer out of their brewery. Like okay. that was how he was getting his side thing going. And the owner of that actual facility needed some labels done too. So then he brought my name to that owner and I started doing a bunch for them. Um, oh, that's really? Uh, Wall and Paul Pack Brewing Company, like in the Pocono area. I've done tons for them. I've done more for them than any other brewery, but, uh, hmm. 
at this point I'm at like probably just under a hundred labels that I've done. So yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> wow. Okay. And that's over a period of how long? Uh, I'm always really bad at this, but like, <laughs> I, I always want to jump right on like five years, but I, I'd say it's like eight years. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. No, that's no, impressive. No, ten, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. No. <laughs> it just keeps no, getting bigger. Because my daughter's ten now, so and it was like just after she was born, I started doing the labels. So that that makes more sense. But I would have said five if I didn't think that through. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now you also have a big cartel site, and you've been selling things on there. Like, how has selling your work online been going for you? Eh, it's been all right. I don't really promote myself too well, and okay. I actually kind of forgot that I had that. But like, I sell some stickers every once in a while through there and stuff. Like, I uh, I go through. I I use like the free big cartel. I don't right, like, like you get the five for free. Stickers. Yeah. So every once in a while, when I do have something, I'll like delete one product and put something else up just and then like sometimes someone will reach out and be like oh that's not on there and i'm like all right let me just do something real quick go ahead you can buy it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you're when you do it you're actually selling the physical products and you don't have it connected to like a print on demand or anything like that no no i i'll send the the, the physical products i'm trying to think is big cartel like connected to you can have it connected through instagram i don't know if that's the the one i use the most um that's the one that's yeah. in your link tree is the big. Okay. Then, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those that through that, I'll just like send the physical products from, from myself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just didn't know if uh, there are a lot of them that can connect to carts where you can just upload the drawing and then it prints it on demand for you, like shirts and things like that. A lot of people are against it. Uh, a lot of people like it. Some people make an entire career just doing that, you know? So I wasn't sure if you, if you had I'm done one or the other. No, I'm not against anything either. And like, that actually sounds pretty cool. I, just, I, don't, know, I don't know that I'll ever actually get around to doing that, but that, that does sound good. <laughs> right. That's the other problem. Like it does sound really cool and I've got it set up for a few things, but I'll get as far as doing one and setting it up and putting it and connecting it to the store. And then within a year, I might do another, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. one of the, I yeah. don't do it nearly as much as the stuff that I can just put out. It's yeah. So I was just curious if you were if you were having any different experiences with that when you were doing it. Uh, you also have a YouTube channel that has a bunch of different videos on it. Um, I don't know if you're using that anymore. It looks like it hasn't been updated in very often in quite some time. But you've got to, I there's, what's that? Yeah, I have intentions to use it more, but I just don't, um, and I don't really have like a focus with that. Uh, I guess. I kind of treated that like I treat a lot of other endeavors like that, like art and whatever. It's just kind of like, I was like, God, oh, this seems really good. Like I, uh, I went out and bought like a green screen. And, oh, wow. Like, you went that far. Like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, uh, my plan, I never really had a plan with YouTube. So it was like, oh, I'll throw some skits that me and my friends will do and like this and that. And then like, oh, some art. And, you know, I'll just throw like Thursday night me and my friend, skate my ramp or something and it's just like it's very all over the place uh, yeah. i really should focus and like make it only art related but it just uh yeah i didn't uh i, I before you said that i kind of even forgot that i had a youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i really really like instagram like from the day that rolled out and I'm sure like a lot of other people every day, I'm liking it less and less. There's just like changes that I'm just like, I'm like, oh, it's so good for like artists and photographers and stuff like that. And now I'm like, oh, now it's just kind of every day. I'm like, oh, what is that? I don't like that. <laughs> okay. What, yeah. well, uh, how often would you say you post on there? Instagram? Yeah. Uh, at least once a week, I'd say. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, because again, like, I'm doing uh, I'm doing illustrations for other people, beer labels, skateboards. But then, like one one of the things I really oh, yeah, really... we haven't even talked about the skateboards yet. Oh yeah, so like I don't know if you can see, but like I like to do like a lot of like vino cut stuff, and then like printing that out. Yeah, and uh, and again, I'm always experimenting with that too. Like I'll just come up with an idea, start carving something out, or like you know sketching it out and carving it out. And, and is that barrel from Nightmare Before Christmas? 
Oh, this? No, no, no. This is just like a, a skeleton type dude that I do. Oh, He's okay. Just like, I got gotcha. you. You know, there's like a beer. I couldn't beer see bottle. it right away. Like it, it, I wasn't sure. So I wasn't sure if I was, uh, what I was seeing at first. And do you do a lot of those lino cuts? Yeah, I do a ton of them. Um, like some of them are like, I don't know if this is going to be too loud when I step over here, but like I'll do like these tiny, tiny, tiny ones. Like that's just like a little onion. Okay. All right. <laughs> but then, you know, you, you, can, you can go like crazy with them. Like this is like... I could probably print that on like a t-shirt, like yeah. that skull. Um, but I, I think the process of just like carving those out is like really therapeutic and the complete opposite of when a client is just telling you like, Oh, change the hat. Oh, change this color mm-hmm. a little bit. And like this back and forth of like, Oh, I got an email and I got to do this thing. I got to do that thing. Like this is like, you sketch it out, you start carving it. And sometimes it takes like hours to carve it and you're like, that's, that's what I got, you know? Like, but, but I really enjoy then like printing them out using different inks and then sometimes just like leaving the product or product, whatever it is, like the, the print the way it is. And then other times I'll like scan that in on my scanner and kind of like do digital coloring with it. Mm -hmm. It Depends on like how I feel like it turned out. Uh, So, and then sometimes I'll do that. And then look back and be like, I like it better when it was just like black ink on, on the white paper. <laughs> so yeah. like that, that'll be like what I post after all. But yeah. Yeah. That's the one drawback that I have. I I've done lino cuts in one, of course, being the, if I ever put text on it, I realize far too late that it isn't in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I hate that happened. It's happened to me a lot, <laughs> but uh, the other one being is I'll do it. And it's really just for one thing. It's like, well, I could have just drawn this then. Like, why, yeah. why did I just spend all this time doing that? I don't know. I, I guess I really like um, the imperfections that you get from it, too. Oh, yeah. like, like, you print it, and you're like, ah, oh, but it like didn't print perfect here. It didn't print perfect here. And then I'll let it dry, and I'll scan it in. And then if I'm doing, like, some digital coloring and stuff with it, it just, like, it has this look that, like, I know people will go in and make – just a totally digital drawing or something like look like it was a lino cut, but Mm -hmm. I I like actually doing it first. Um, And yeah, I could probably save a lot of time by not doing the lino cut first, but that that's like, I get the enjoyment out of just carving it, like sitting there and carving it and carving it and carving it. So yeah. Uh, And also tiny sort of rant, but just kind of, it's overused sort of thing. But when you were talking about the lino cut and some people will make it look like that, but it's actually digital, uh, like with procreate, I have that problem with the, uh, the comic book effect that mm-hmm. everybody's using the pixelated, like looks like it's an old four color comic book print. Like everybody uses that. That's great. But at the same time, it's like, Oh, it used to be such a unique thing and now it's expected. So it kind yeah. of, it, you know, it's one of those things where I'm like, darn it. What, what would it look like if it didn't have that? So I don't know. Sure. It's sure. it's a mini rant where like, also I don't have procreate. I have a Android tablet that I draw on. So I also can't do it. Maybe I'm just jealous. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'd probably I totally be doing it. I don't know. It, it's certainly overused. Um, and I feel like it's not always necessary. Like if that, if that's what you do is like old horror comic looking stuff, then like right. sure. And like, but like you were saying, it's like, you just see everybody doing it. Yeah, because it's there and it's an effect you can use, you know. Uh, so anyway, but I do think it's also uh, just that I can't. The only way I can recreate it is one where it's like, that doesn't look the same. Like they have the paper texture and everything. Anyway, sorry. That was just a mini rant and it really had nothing to do with anything. Uh, so now tell me about uh, the skateboards. So how did you get started with the skateboards? So again, it was uh, just a lot of, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't praise or thank Instagram as a program. Uh-huh. Enough. Like, um, and again, I, like, I worry that Instagram is getting away from this, but like, it was always so good to just like, when that first came out, I was like only following artists, things I liked, like skateboarding and like, just like, it wasn't like I started scrolling through and it would just be like these weird videos about things that like, I have no interest in, but I still end up clicking on them and watching them like i think everybody does now and i'm just like and then i watch it and i'm like what did i watch (laughs) like and why did i spend the time on that Mm -hmm. it was it was so so i can't i i have to like thank instagram as a program at least what it was so like 
Uh, this guy Jordan um, was starting up this skateboard company, Queen Skateboards, out of Idaho, which is like nowhere near me. Um, hmm. And for whatever reason, we like connected. And he hadn't done he had, no, I guess he had done like a board or two, but like he hadn't done a ton yet. And he's like, oh, are you interested in doing a board graphic? And I mean, not to sound negative in any way, shape, or form, but like I was kind of just like not over, but just like I got into like a hundred beer labels and I'm like, oh, this is like what I do now. Like I really wish I did something else. So like he what? reached out like, <laughs> Hell yeah. Like like and and I was always really into skateboarding growing up and everything, so it was like, yeah, of course I want to do that. So yeah. um so yeah, like uh first one I did with them was just like this guy, which uh it worked, I don't know if I can so like Queen Skateboards. You can see all these like on my Instagram account and stuff yeah. and like close ups and stuff, but just like kind of a play on like uh it's like the Queen of Hearts, like the playing card and okay. I kinda went for like a whole yin yin yangy kind of thing where it's like this is like the better side and this is like the more like she's got like a beer bottle in her hand and she's flipping the bird and stuff and all kind of like worms coming out of the skull <laughs> kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then after that, they, uh, they did a collaboration with this pizza company that I had never even heard of because obviously, cause I'm not from the area with um, a pizza company. That seems strange. What's that? A pizza company. That seems like a, well, I guess yeah. it's not that strange of a collaboration. So Queen Skateboards did this collaboration with Idaho Pizza Company, which is like a pretty big pizza company out there. Yeah. Apparently, apparently their pizza is awesome too. Um, huh. And it was, it's one of those things where like, they came to me with like this, oh, we want like a deer or an elk eating a piece of pizza. And I was kind of like, oh, how? How's that going to work? And I'm so glad they came up with that idea because it was just like such a yeah. different wild thing to draw and try to figure out how I'm going to fit it on a skateboard and all. Um, so like, I was really grateful for that. And uh, hmm. I just finished one up with them. It's uh, the map. It's a map of Idaho with all their skate parks. Okay. Like on there. So like that was a really fun one to do. Just like goofy little icons and stuff like all over the map. But uh yeah, I'm I'm very happy to be doing skateboard graphics now. Like, yeah. although like, you know, I, I love the beer stuff too. But how often would you say you do the skateboard graphics? I mean, again, I'm really bad with like time and length of time and stuff. Like, I'm not entirely sure when he reached out to me, but it was maybe maybe a year ago. So okay, I'm, I'm on my third that hasn't been printed yet, but should print pretty soon within the next couple of weeks. So and where do they have those done at? Um, so there's a couple companies and, and this is another thing where like, I didn't know anything about this at the time. Yeah. Neither uh, do I. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I, uh, I was really worried about like separation and stuff like that with, uh, like screen printing. Yeah. And they don't do a lot of boards that way anymore. It's this thing called like a heat transfer. So mm -hmm. I just kind of send them like a high res picture, which I think, I never, I never send them a JPEG. I think I send them like a PNG, but like, that's enough. There's like no separation with the colors or anything. They print it out on this like clear piece of, I don't know that it's like plastic, but it's something like plastic. And they put the board through this machine that then just like it heat transfers it onto it. Okay. And it's like awesome. Like it, it looks so good and it's so different than like screen printing now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm curious what kind of wear and tear it gets when you uh, when you do use it because I know how it used to rub. Away. It's been years since I've skateboarded, but I know how it runs rubs away when it's a screen print. I'm curious yeah, how that rubs you know, away. It's pretty similar, like you can really? see. Okay, yeah, you can see people like there's a lot of like if you go to any skate shop now, there's obviously still screen printed boards, but there's a lot of these heat transfer ones. Mm -hmm. Like like major companies are doing that and stuff now too, and. Uh, like these boards I got sent to me and I'm like, oh, I'm keeping them in perfect condition. But uh, I've seen some of like their pros on their team. Um, and I've seen what the boards look like after they've skated them a few times. And like, it looks just like the way like a screen print wears away. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now, what are some things that you have coming up in the future or projects that you're working on that you could tell us about? 
Oh God, I, I, I don't have anything major. Um, I'm still just like selling stuff at like whenever I get out to like a little tiny local thing. Um, what kind of local things? Uh, there's, a there's a beer garden down the street from me that on Sundays, like they do a, a maker's market. Oh, so okay. yeah. So like sometimes I'll sell like stickers, t-shirts, stuff like that there. Um, some prints, um, but I don't, I don't get out to as many of them as I'd like to, but, yeah. <laughs> but I still get out to them. Um, uh, there's, so while I'm Paul Pack that like I, uh, do beer labels for, they're probably sitting on like seven labels right now. Hmm. So I'm not actually like working on them, but they will like steadily be coming out and I'll be like posting about them. All right. Um, and then again, like I have, um, a board with, uh, queen skateboards coming out soon that they'll be selling. And then I'm working on another one right now, just kind of like more of my style and like fun. Um, because like the past two have turned out so awesome, at least in my opinion, but like, yeah, uh, they've been more like, Oh, this is what we want. So now it's like, I get to go back again and do like a really fun, like, you know, kind of like monstery slimy, like, you know, <laughs> That's my plan, at least. We'll, we'll go back and forth a couple times and see what they did. But, uh, Do they let you know how well the uh, the drawings that you've done, whether it be on skateboards or beer labels, uh, how well they come across to people? Or, like, how well they do or, like, the response on them? Uh, sometimes. Not always. I mean, okay. like, uh, the skateboards I've done have uh, have gotten, like, a really good response. Um, the Idaho Pizza Company, like... Um, collab deck i think sold out like the day that they put it out nice um, but that that was for like go skateboard day go skateboarding day and they were doing like a whole thing where like they brought pizza mm -hmm. and just, like a demo and people skating there was like a whole thing like i don't live anywhere near there so right i was gonna say you didn't even get to go <laughs> yeah um and then like the first deck that i did with them they done like i think a couple reissues at least now so like that's been doing well hmm. um and, and and the beer stuff like you know i get feedback um i guess the best feedback is when people come back to you again for more um, that's true <laughs> yeah no i was just curious what i mean it's one thing to go here it is they bought it and they continue to go with it but um yeah i just want to know like do they go wow people really like this one <laughs> or anything like yeah that. the first the first beer label i ever did I think ran for like nine years. So yeah. It was, nice. It's good. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, I would always see that like, you know, well, a lot, a lot of the stuff I do now is like a one-off. It's like one beer they release it once and like, you never see it again. Right. But that was, that was really nice. Cause like I'd go to a local place, like a little shop or like a grocery store and I'd be like, ah, oh, there it is. Oh, mm -hmm. there it is. So, like, <laughs> and my daughter would have fun with that too and stuff. So and uh, if people wanted to check out your work, where could they go do that? Uh, it's it's mainly Instagram. Yeah, it's uh, P H E N Z Y, and that's just my handle or name or whatever. And uh, I, I post pretty regularly there. Um, and I guess my YouTube as well. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll start using that more. <laughs> maybe I've inspired you. <laughs> yeah, I really should. I really should get that green screen working. I want to see what you do with the green screen now. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so I want to thank you very much for talking with me today. It was uh, great talking with you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you.